what is good my beautiful people it's your boy ajs and we are back for another video if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys are liking commenting sharing and subscribing we're getting straight into the video we're not even playing with it 50 cent exclusively reveals new post footage 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 i don't know why i was about to say footage reveals new footage that could allegedly put diddy behind bars let's get right into it they know like if something crazy is going on if they send it to me, I'm a, I'll make sure I get out there. Like, as far as this video I call is concerned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and those other properties. So, they sent it to me. I really kind of felt like those photographs were not happening because of Cassie. I felt like they was happening because of Puffy. Right, right. Oh. Do you know what? You have to respect 50 Cent. you got to respect him. Do you want to know why? Because his level of integrity is very integral. This man does not care who you are. He doesn't care what you're about. He doesn't, it, it seems like he has no ties with anybody. If you are just a terrible person and he doesn't like you, best believe he's gonna do absolutely everything that he possibly can to get you down and I respect it. It's open season on Diddy and if anyone is making the most of it, it's 50 Cent. Diddy has been forced into hiding following the recent string of allegations against him. From Cassie's lawsuit, to close comrades blowing the whistle on his nasty business over the years, it's been a PR nightmare for the hip hop mogul. However, what most people don't know is that Fifth was on to Diddy before anyone even knew about the skeletons in his closet. Back in 2010, Fifth jumped on an interview and spilled the deets on how Diddy treated Cassie. However, back then, 50's bombshell interview faded into oblivion, but now the landscape has changed. Diddy no longer holds the same position in the industry he did back then. And it seems... You see, do you know what's mad to me, yeah? I feel like so much stuff in the industry is due to come out. So much stuff is due to come out that no one paid attention to at the time. I feel like so many different people spoke out and spoke about so many different things that were happening in the industry that absolutely fell on deaf ears for everybody. But now in the kind of era that we're in, the kind of movements that we're seeing happening, I feel like everything is starting to come back up and it's beginning to bite everybody in the eight. I feel like people are running scurred. And you should run very scurred. Not gonna lie. When you hold all the keys in Hollywood and all these types of different places and you feel like you can push your weight around and take advantage of people and, and they're moving mad. I'm not gonna lie. Seems like everyone has something to say against him. Especially 50, who could very well become the reason for Diddy in an orange jumpsuit. Just what crucial evidence did Fifth get his hands on? And is it enough to land Diddy in jail? Let's find out. Puffy's like, a bitch. <laughs> oh, shit, man. What'd he say? <laughs> to describe Puffy in one word is a bitch. Fifth and Diddy are sworn enemies. For years, Fifth has been dragging Diddy's name through the mud, hoping to dethrone him. When the G-Unit member isn't calling Diddy gay, he's taking shots at him for his wild parties. However, his efforts proved to be in vain until Cassie entered the picture. The R there comes a time in every creator. You, you, they, 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 ain't, they ain't need to hit me with the ad like that. They ain't need to hit me with the ad like that. Let's get that. R&B singer sent shockwaves through Diddy's world by filing a lawsuit against him towards the end of 2023. From years of physical abuse to forcing her into bed with male escorts, Cassie spilled the beans on everything in the most chilling detail. I, I just want to say, yeah. I feel like the rabbit hole with this whole Cassie and Diddy thing is literally just like, we're, we're just at the top of the rabbit hole. Like we haven't gone deep yet. I feel like Cassie has so many more bullets in the chamber that she didn't unleash that Diddy is, is, is lucky-ish. Well, not even lucky-ish because it, it set off so many chain reactions. I feel like she's playing chess. She did, she did the right thing. I feel, yeah, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. She gave just the amount of information to set off so many more motions that was going to allow Diddy to finally crumble. While Cassie settled the matter outside of court with a $30 million settlement, her lawsuit opened the floodgates. Fans started combing through Diddy's socials with a fine-toothed comb, putting everything under the magnifying glass. Suddenly, that video of Diddy scolding Cassie while she was covered with a blanket wasn't funny anymore. What you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say. However, if there was one person who wasn't shocked, it was 50 Cent. He knew about Diddy's abuse long before anyone. 
In fact, back in 2010, Fifth tried pulling back the curtains on the relationship, but his words were chalked up to that of a jealous rival. During an interview with DJ Who Kid on Shade 4550, Scent revealed that back in the day, he received some explicit pictures of Cassie on his phone. Shocked, he rang up Diddy, asking him for an explanation. Send me the girl pictures, like pictures of his girl, like, not the shit that y'all saw. Worse, way worse. <laughs> Hey, I heard about these pictures, and this is this is the thing. Like, I'm, I'm hearing like deep in this situation, like Cassie would have like some of the data and stuff like that that Diddy was creating, delete it, and then Diddy was able to come back and be like, "Ha ha, got you." Still got the data. Like, how, how mad can you be as a person to 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 just hover all of this stuff all over all, all, all over Cassie, and then not only that. You've then gone and sent it to different people in the industry. It's like, bro, was you, like, was you, was you so on top of the world that you thought you was never going to get caught for this? And you know, I, I get it. Maybe he did really think he was never going to get caught for this. Maybe he really did think he was going to get away with this because so many different people in the industry have been getting away with stuff like this for years. But the chickens have come to roost. Boo, boo. Uh, Are you kidding me? Yeah? Like penetration pictures and, and nah, come on. Instead, Diddy turned the tables on Fifth, questioning him on how he got his hands on those pictures. But Fifth didn't know, though unaware of the source, a lingering intuition told Fifth that something was not right. Even I called the nigga. I said, "Yo, you really you fucking with this girl? Like you really like you like her like that?" And he was like, "Yeah, that, that's my girl." I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna send you something. You look at it. You call me back." Oh, I man. sent him the photos, the pictures and everything. And the nigga called back and was like, yo, thanks, man. Y'all, I really appreciate that. Yo, where you get this shit from? It dawned on him that the sender likely intended for those pictures to become public. And given his rivalry with Diddy, the sender thought that Fifth would be the best person. While the interview was buried at the time of release, it resurfaced once more following Cassie's lawsuit, forcing everyone to pay heed to Fifth's warnings. Given all that's been revealed about Diddy, there's no doubt that he took those pictures. According to Cassie's lawsuit, Brother Love would force her into intimate encounters with male escorts. He would hire male hookers, drug them and Cassie, and film the encounters all the while pleasing himself in a corner. The gravity of these accusations paints a deeply troubling image of Diddy's behavior and raises serious questions about his actions and the impact on those involved. Diddy most likely kept these pictures to blackmail Cassie. It's why Cassie stayed with Diddy for nearly a decade. What's even more shocking is that fans should have suspected something when he offered Cassie a 10-year music deal. It's most likely that Diddy used the deal to rope in Cassie before trapping her in a cycle of abuse. You know, the only thing I really ever looked at was like, dang, I always looked at like, what if she just came to him because she wanted to be an artist and she thought that she can sing and he thought that she was beautiful and instead of entertaining uh, what her dreams were about in her eyes, he wanted to date her. Do you know, I think the worst part about all of this is I feel like Cassie genuinely came to Diddy as a person that just wanted to learn, as a person that wanted to see their talent like really be, be on the big screen. Like she wanted to be able to go underneath someone like Diddy to be able to grow, to be able to uh, 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 you know, get to certain heights that she never would have been able to get to without him. Guidance, all of these types of different things. She probably came to Diddy on a genuine level, and this man decided to take take that genuineness and completely twist it into some of the most heinous things I've ever heard. Diddy deserves everything that's coming to him. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. All of this is alleged. All of this is alleged. So please, nobody see me. But Yo, the chicken's coming to roost on me. The chicken's really, really coming to roost. But made her his girlfriend. So it's like, that's a, that's. A and for anyone finding it hard to believe Cassie's and 50's words, let's focus on the fact that it's not Diddy's first rodeo. Diddy has been pulling the same thing with countless women before Cassie. Following Cassie's lawsuit, Jane Doe also stepped forward, accusing Diddy of drugging and essaying her when she was a college student. According to court documents, Diddy and Jane Doe had a common group of friends. What's more, she had the opportunity of starring alongside Diddy in a few of his music videos. 
While the relationship between the two had been professional, things took a turn in January 1991, when Jane was on a holiday break in New York. During her stay, she reluctantly agreed to dinner with Diddy at Harlem's Wells restaurant. Now, Jane wanted to wrap up the dinner and head home. However, Diddy had other plans. He forced Jane to accompany him to his music studio in his car. It was only when Jane stepped out of the car at the studio that she realized that Diddy had spiked her drink since she couldn't walk. Diddy then took her back to his place where he essayed her and videotaped the encounter. Following the incident, Jane proceeded you know the worst thing about this is it seems like there's like a certain type of MO that he has with every single person that he's dealing with. Um, and because this is coming out so much, it just it just paints a very daunting picture. Like it always seems to be like someone was some kind of drug induced situation happens. Um, and then some kind of essay happens and then he video records it. What I mean, what what other cases does this remind you guys of? Hmm? What what other high profile case? does this remind you guys of who is currently serving an incredibly long sentence in jail for some of these types of types of heinous heinous kind of situations who else is put it in the comment section down below it to not go to the hospital or the police out of fear what's more she didn't have a clue about diddy recording the encounter until Devonte swing a member of the R&B group Jodeci stopped by days later to tell her about how he and the staff at the studio had seen her sex tape. Upon asking how many people viewed the video, Swing replied, everyone. Swing could have easily testified about the incident. However, much like everyone else, he was reluctant to take the stand against Diddy. His only fear was jeopardizing his music group's deal, making silence seem like the safer option. Following this dark chain of events, Jane Doe was hospitalized for severe depression and dropped out of college. She then spent years trying to heal. You know, I think there's a lot of blame to go around as well. Because um, I, I don't necessarily like comply with the whole silence is compliance type of thing. But bro, if you know the situation, if you know the types of things that are going on, if you know the type of person that Diddy is and you're around these things on a regular basis, like where does your moral compass step in? Where does your moral compass step in and you decide, oh, do you know what? Like, this guy's doing so much, so much mad things. Let me put my career to the side and just try and get my man out of here. Like, it seems like no one's moral compass kind of shut up in a lot of these situations because well, everyone was just thinking about themselves. Everyone was literally just thinking about my career, my career, my career. Instead of thinking about, bro, this guy's actually damaging a bag of people. Like, these, these types of things that, that Diddy's doing don't just affect the people that... Um, that he's doing them too it affects their family sorry so these types of things that diddy's doing affects their family affects their friends affects their children uh, affects their immediate immediate people around them because whatever diddy's been doing to these people is damaging not only externally but internally as well and i'm pretty sure a lot of the things that he's been doing has been leaving lasting damages on every single person it's been done with done to so i'm just wondering like, where does everyone's moral compass come in where is everyone ready to be like okay let's stop you need to go to i don't know man it's a bit wild still from the trauma that diddy caused her before eventually leaving the music industry for good however cassie's lawsuit forced her to face the ghosts from her past once more for anyone thinking that jane doe might be trying to milk diddy for money given the recent controversy take a listen to what mark curry has to say about diddy we used to go to the when we go to the club we used to have these bottles right and on this bottle, they'd be, they be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd be to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they'd be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He's running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. During the tell-all interview, the form. See, do you know what's mad about what he just said? Not only was he very candid about it, which makes me feel like this happened a lot more than we actually know, but I feel like as I've been researching these topics, it seems like there was a very mu there was very much so a culture of this happening back in the day that everyone just kind of turned a blind eye to. Like, like imagine being in a club, and and there was such a premeditation to drugging women. That the man them literally said, my guy, 
don't drink out of those ones over there. Th th those, those ones got the, the uh, uh, in it. Do you get it? Those ones have a little bit of uh, uh, Do you get it? Don't drink those ones. Drink these ones over here. These are the madness bottles. The ones over there for the gal. That's correct. Like, there's so much premeditation that has to go into this, which makes me think, again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We know nothing. There's so much more that's going to come out. And so much that won't come out, so many stories that won't be heard, that it's just absolutely sad. Former Bad Boy Records artist got real about how Diddy operates behind the scenes. According to Mark, he would invite anyone into his room for, you know what? Let me go over by Puff Room, see what they doing. And you knock on Puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in? You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. He compared Diddy's situation to that of R. Kelly, even hinting that more women might come forward in the future. What's interesting is that 50 pointed to something similar when Diddy settled the lawsuit with Cassie. He posted a screenshot of the story on his Instagram with the caption, LOL. He paid that money real quick. Should have done that before the shark saw the blood in the water. And here they come in five, four, three, two, one every woman he ever put his hand on. At this point, there's no doubt that Diddy has been abusing countless women over the years. As the relationships, I've seen him go through the relationship with Kim. I've seen um, his arrogance in the relationship. I've seen violent times with him in his relationships, not just with Kim, but I've seen him make in all of his relationships, if you ask me. While only a few of them have dared to take Diddy to court, a lot of them have revealed the truth in tell-all interviews. Gina Hugh, Diddy's ex accused the record executive of stomping on her stomach and grabbing her hair. And that's not all. Upon learning that Gina was pregnant with her child, Diddy proceeded to pay her off to abort the baby. He like stomped on my stomach like really hard and I like took the wind out of my breath. I couldn't even, I couldn't breathe. And he kept, but he kept hitting me and I was like pleading to him like, can you just, can you stop? I can't breathe. That said, while Gina managed to break free from Diddy's influence, not everyone has been as fortunate. Kim Porter stands as a stark example of the repercussions that can unfold when one ventures too close to Diddy's orbit. At the end of the day, whoever's around him. I am not gonna lie, the surviving Diddy documentary is gonna be crazy. And I feel like someone really needs to reopen that Kim Porter case because something don't seem right there. Not gonna lie, something doesn't seem right some of the details ain't matching up and now that we got so much more different people coming out to speak about diddy mm, slightly feels like everything we were told about it is not as it seems to the day whoever's around him well that this is a uh uh the, the final notice the final note because they'll suck the life out of him like everybody else that he's been around although according to autopsy reports kim died due to complications from pneumonia However, not everyone buys it. Jaguar Wright sure doesn't. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia likes. That said, the question is, why would Diddy take out the mother of her kids? Well, according to Gene Deal, Diddy's ex-bodyguard, Cassie's story is Kim's story. During the time Kim was alive, several sources revealed that Kim suffered intense abuse at Diddy's hands. However, things reached a turning point when it was revealed that Porter was left with a broken nose following an argument with Diddy. According to sources, Diddy had bugged Kim's phone and heard her talking to another man. Furious, he invited Kim onto a yacht in Saint Tropez under the pretense of having a good time. However, Sources later spilled to the sun that by 2 a.m. they heard the couple arguing loudly. This went on for several hours. The situation got out of hand at 7 a.m. in the morning when they heard screaming. Apparently, Diddy had messed up Kim's nose during the argument, but he couldn't have Kim parading around with a broken nose in public. So allegedly, he flew in a plastic surgeon from Geneva and had Kim spend some days in a hotel until her nose healed and it was safe for her to be in public again which is close to what Cassie described in her lawsuit. He broke him, uh, oh, let's, let's say allegedly, but it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim's nose on the yacht. 
show you see and this this is what the what's like like so mad about this whole situation is that there's so much information so many things that have happened that haven't been brought to light which makes me feel like there's certain things that are never going to be brought to light um and i, I just I, I don't know man i feel like I feel like there's so much skeletons in this guy's closet that like for him to actually be held accountable for every single thing it's just never it's just never gonna happen like we we'll, we'll be we'll be happy if we'll be sorry we'll be lucky if he if he even sees a jail cell after this because right now as far as i understand a lot of the, the cases that are up against him are civil suits are they which means that everyone's going after him for money but i need i, I really want to see this guy prosecuted i really want to see him put behind bars because this is crazy cassie's story is cassie's story is kim's story cassie book is kim's book if you were on the internet back then you might remember seeing a few pictures of kim with a bandage on her nose however all traces of these pictures have been erased from the internet now and it's not hard to guess who was behind it unfortunately Kim never revealed the truth about her busted nose. During interviews, she said that she had banged her nose on the table. But before you come for Kim, remember that she was still under Diddy's hold back then. Not to mention, she had to think of her three kids. So Kim wasn't exactly in a position to spill the beans. That said, Kim did plan to blow the whistle on Diddy's book she was reportedly working on before her death. However, Kim's book never got to see the light of day and fans think they know why. Her book could have easily ended Diddy's career and put him behind bars. It was Diddy's worst nightmare, which gives him a motive for murder. Strangely enough, it's not just the women. For years, there have been rumors about Diddy being on the DL, and until now, fans have been turning a blind eye to the allegations. However, Cassie's lawsuit inspired a long list of Diddy's victims to step forward, including Columbus Short. According to the actor, Diddy once rang him up for a late night booty call at two in the morning. Upon answer, Diddy expressed disappointment at Short not attending the BT Awards. So far, so good. However, things took a turn when Diddy randomly told Short that he was at the Hilton Hotel. Confused, Short asked him who he was with when Diddy informed him that he was alone. It's then that the purpose of the call dawned on Short. Fortunately, he knew better than to entertain Diddy's whims. What's more, even Cat Williams, the underrated king of comedy, was not marked safe from Diddy's advances. During a recent interview with Shannon Sharp, Cat revealed that like Dave Chappelle, he turned down a 50 million contract as well. Hey, big up Cat Williams. We definitely get some of Cat Williams content on the channel because the man is destroying everywhere. I have never heard a person speak and have so many people pressed enough to reply. Bro, Ludacris came out of 20 years. 20 years of retirement. Ludacris ain't made music in years. But he made re music to reply to Cat though. <laughs> Interview with Shannon Sharp. Cat revealed that like Dave Chappelle, he turned down a 50 million contract as well because he wanted to protect his integrity from someone like Diddy. Now, I've had to turn down $50 million four times. Four times. Just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling yeah. you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, P. Diddy be wanting to party. And you got to tell him no. Oh, you got to tell him no. Now, Columbus and Kat are alive and well. Unfortunately, most people who went up against Diddy back in the day can't say the same thing. Wendy Williams is a glaring example of what happens when you try to blow the whistle on one of the most powerful hip-hop moguls of all time. Brought that up, Kirk Burroughs, I did an interview with him some months ago, and he told a story about Wendy Williams. She got fired from Hot 97 because she had a picture of Puffy, and she was saying on air that she was gonna reveal the picture. During the early part of her career, the former broadcaster landed a job for New York City's Hot 97 radio station in 1994, a year after Bad Boy Records was founded. Despite bad boy artists being big on the radio, Wendy and Diddy did not get along. During an episode of the radio show The Wendy Williams Experience in 2009, Wendy revealed that the music mogul went as far as instructing members of Total, an all-female R&B trio, to fight her when she worked at the radio station. Recalling the incident, Wendy said, I got off the air one day, them Total Bees were downstairs, and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, 
waiting for something to go down. Thankfully, her boyfriend at the time stepped in before things hit the fan. But the question remains, why would Diddy go after a radio host? Well, there are two theories. According to one, Misa Hilton, Diddy's baby mama was at the radio station with her son, Justin Combs, who was only an infant at the time, along with bad boy rival Suge Knight. Apparently, Diddy got wind of his son and his mortal enemy being in the same room, and he wasn't happy. To make things worse, the streets were talking about Wendy snapping a picture of Suge playing with Diddy's kid and releasing it to the public. So that's when Diddy rounded up his soldiers and decided to put an end to the situation, the gangster way. However, according to another theory, it wasn't a picture of Justin and Suge that had Diddy all riled up. Apparently, Wendy had landed her hands on a photo of Diddy getting intimate with another man. The photo showed someone pulling down Diddy's shorts during his vacation in Cancun. Now, Wendy might not have been beaten up. See, do you know what's mad? How, how is everyone getting a hold of these, these pictures? I mean, if I assume that Diddy's in a situation, and let's say, for example, he's taking the pictures of the people, is he holding it on? And let's say, for example, he holds it on his phone or whatever device that he has. Is he then sending it out to people as a way to gloat? Like, is he just showcasing it to everybody? Is this how everyone keeps getting these photos? Or is it like paparazzi that are just hiding in the bushes and taking the picture? Like, I'm so confused. How comes so much of this material is kind of just floating around? And who who is it that is actively putting out the material? Is it Diddy, the one that is just posting a bunch of revenge pee all over the place? Or, or I, I'm, I'm baffled. And then... If so much of these images are about, and so many people know that it like they're very compromising positions for Diddy, why didn't anyone just put any of this information out? Why didn't anyone just just throw the information out? Surely that would have been like the, the nail in his coffin for Diddy, no? Surely. Up the way Diddy intended, but he did get her fired. Think again, because Jean Deal confirmed her story during an interview with The Art of Dialogue. For whatever reason, Do was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. When he grabbed his trunk to pull them down, some girls that was taking pictures. They took the, that picture and emailed it back to Wendy Williams. <laughs> Wendy Williams said she had him in a compromising position. According to him, Diddy did get a radio show host fired for a picture. I'm not gonna lie, this guy knows too much. He knows way too much. So much so that I almost feel like it's impossible for him not to have been complicit in some of these things that were going on. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is all alleged. These these are all alleged things. Again, I'm just I'm just a UKDian that is just commenting on a situation that I'm seeing over in America. So I don't know, all of this is alleged to me. But for, for, for me, for me, looking at this situation, it genuinely seems like big man, you know, too much for you not to have been complicit in some of these situations, allegedly. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna leave that up to you lost interpretation, you get me? And that's not all. In another interview, Gene talked about how Diddy and Ja Rule got up to some freaky business in a hotel room. Now at first, Gene didn't know what was happening in the room while he stood guard outside. But then Ja Rule's cousin came along. Next thing you know, somebody rang the doorbell. We had the presidential suite where we was at. So I opened the door and uh, the dude said, yo, I'm here for my cousin. I said, who your cousin? And he said, uh, Ja Rule. I said, well, he busy right now. He said, uh, he busy doing what? I said, he with Puff, they're in the room, they busy, they don't want to be bothered. Gene Deal ended up confronting Ja Rule's cousin and throwing him on the piano. The commotion caused Diddy and Ja Rule to step out of the room. And guess what? Both of them were in their towels. And threw him against the piano. When I threw him into the piano, Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. So was there a third person in the room or were these two at it with each other? Honestly, it's the 21st century. It's understandable why Diddy wouldn't want to come out in the 90s. The hip hop culture was not as open-minded back then 
and a coming out moment would have probably made Diddy lose his street cred and mark the end of his career. Although things have only slightly improved in the industry, the music scene is still rife with homophobia. That said, in Diddy's case, the problem isn't that he goes around sneaking with men. For fans, it's the fact that he dangles promises of music deals in front of young artists only to sexually exploit them. So when you get, that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Look, call, call the artist up here to the room, tell them I'm gonna have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. But at neck, you be like, how that? By all accounts, Diddy has a long list of victims and people like 50 Cent intend to tell their story, which is why word on the streets is that Fifth is working on a Diddy documentary. A spokesperson for Jackson's production company, G-Unit Film and Television, confirmed the news to Billboard. Apparently, 50 plans to make a documentary about the SA allegations against Diddy and donate the proceeds from the film to the victims. 50 even posted the news on his Instagram with the caption, WTF, at some point you gotta just do the right thing. And that's all about the beef between 50 and Diddy. Fifth, unlike others who may shy away due to Diddy's position in the industry, has embraced the role of a vocal opponent. And so the recent slew of allegations has begun to chip away at the foundation of Diddy's empire, posing a substantial threat to his long-standing reign in the hip-hop realm. Do you know what? I absolutely cannot wait for that Surviving Diddy uh, uh, documentary. I can't wait. And do you know what it is? I feel like 50 Cent is pulling no punches when it comes to this. I feel like he's got the exclusive of the exclusive. I feel like he's got everything that is needed. I feel like he's gotten things signed off that would never have been signed off if it weren't for 50. Do you, do you get it? I feel like there's so many different things that are going to come out. Images, uh, video, voice messages, uh, uh, testimonials that are going to bury Diddy for everything he's done. Yeah? Bury him. But you know what? It's, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. I pray that obviously all the the victims that have been hurt by Diddy uh, at some point get some kind of justice, closure and healing. Um, but let me know what you guys think about this whole Diddy situation in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing to the video. Without further ado, it's your boy AJS. Peace.